So here's the file we're going to be using to review the if and the VLOOKUP functions. So our first sheet in our file is about if basics. And we can see here that the logic behind the if function is that you're going to be running a logical test and you'll output a particular value if it's true and a different value if it's false. Looking at the function argument window, we can see that we have the if function. Here we can put in whatever logical test we like. And then again, output this value if it's true and this value if it's false. And as with all function argument windows, you get a description of what the function does. And that depending on what box you're in in the argument window, it will give you a little explanation. So we have some information down here that we're going to use the if function to compare different values. And we're going to see how it really depends on how we set up the condition for what answer we get. So for example, I have is 8 greater than 5. Now we know the answer to that is yes. So if I use a less than symbol comparison, if I come here and put the argument window, we can see that the logical window we're asking, we want to know is 8 greater than 5. So if I'm using a less than symbol, I can say, well, the test I'm going to test is that is if 5 is less than 8. If that's true, then we'll say yes. If it's not true, we'll say no. And we go OK. And we do get indeed yes. And yes, 8 is greater than 5. And yes, 5 is less than 8. So one of the confusing issues with the if function is that you might see it one way and another person might see it another, but you have to come to some consensus as to what is it you're actually looking for. If I use the greater than symbol, and again, bring up the argument window so we can see it a little bit better. Here I've changed the test from not five less than eight, but eight greater than five. So exactly how it's written. And again, if it's true, yield yes. If it's not, yield no. And again, we should get yes. Third method of doing this, we can actually point to cell references. So you can see when I click in the formula bar here, I'm showing, putting in that is this cell, B19, is it greater than C19? If it's true, then I yield yes. If it's false, then I yield no. The ability to use cell references as opposed to actually just putting the numbers in the if function, just make it that much more flexible because then if I want to change these values, say I change this to three, then the automatic update of the function happens because it's referring to those two cells and I get a new answer. So I'll just put that back to the eight. With the if function, we do have to be aware of the different logical operators, the different comparisons that we can do in Excel and their associated symbols. So greater than, we just use the greater than key on our keyboard. Greater than or equal to, we have to use the two keys, greater than and equal to on our keyboard. There's not a single key that covers that. Less than, we just have the less than symbol. Less than or equal to, again, we have the two symbols together. Equals is straightforward. And then how we tell Excel that we want to do not equals is to less than and greater than together. And they do have to be in this order. You cannot do them the other way, greater than, then less than. It has to look like this. So let's just do a couple of different um, examples here. We won't go through all of them. You can uh, try them out on your own for practice. I'm going to do this one here. We have is 19 less than 5. So I'm going to go equals and then start typing if to get my if function. I'll bring the argument window. I'm going to bring it underneath. And I'm going to say, OK, is 19 less than 5? A good practice is to actually try to follow the logic of the question somebody has given you. Now, if that is true, then we're going to say yes. And if not, we'll say no. And notice again that when I type in these cells for the value of true and the value of false, I haven't put double quotes around them. When I type it in, no double quotes here, if I click on one of the other cells, Excel recognizes that that should be text and it puts the double quotes around it. And we can see here that logical test, 19 less than 5, well the answer for that is false. So we're going to get our false answer or sorry, we're going to have a get our false output here. So value if false, we will get the answer 
no. And remember, we do can we can see the answer in two places on our argument window. Okay. Let's try this one here equals if, and we'll do the logical test again, and we'll put in 15 equals 14. We can see that the answer is false. And again, we can just put in yes or no. And we get that no, 15 does not equal to 14. If we want a greater than or equal to, let's try this one here. So equals if we have our logical test, we use our argument window, 958 greater than or equal to. So I need both symbols and we have four. And if that is true, then we're gonna say yes and no. And you can put any, any text you want in here. I'm just sticking with the yes and no, okay? Let's try the less than or equal to equals if, and I'm just putting them in different columns. I'm just, you know, depending on the type of um, symbol I'm using. So equals if, bring the argument window, let's bring this one above. So we wanna check is 39 less than or equal to nine. We can see that Excel is recognizing that, it's saying it's false. And again, we'll just go with the yes and no. And we go, okay, so we get the answer. Here's the not equal to, let's actually use the cell reference for this. So we're gonna go equals if, we're gonna use our argument window and we're gonna say zero and we want not equal to. So we have to use the less than greater than and put in the other cell reference C24 and we can see how it's true. Now I'm gonna just illustrate this. I'm gonna take out the less than or equal to. Okay, I'll take it all out since I've done that. So I'm gonna go B24. What if I did it this way? And we have, see how I'm not getting any answer here now. And then if I try to go to the next cell, it's saying, well, that's an invalid logical statement. So don't forget, this has to be less than, greater than, okay? And again, we'll just stick with the basic yes and no, okay? Let's take a look at text here. Let's try and do it inside an if statement. So equals if, and I'll bring up my argument window again. And we have Tim equals, don't have the equals there, Tim. And again, I go to the next box and see how it's saying there's an error here. It's my hashtag name question mark error. Are you trying to refer to a function? Are you doing something else? What are you trying to do here? What happens with the if statement, if we're trying to compare text, we can't really use the basic if like this. We should actually be using the cell references. It just makes life easier. So here we'll go equals if. This time around again, I'll bring up my argument window, but I'll just point to the cells. So is that cell B27 equal to C27? And you can see that as soon as I selected the C27, we get a result true. And we'll just go yes and no again. Now, please notice that those cells had the same word, but one was in all uppercase and one was in mixed case. So capital at the beginning and two lower cases. So Excel is recognizing, no, is this just saying it's strings? It's not saying it's an exact match. Okay, that would be a different function. We'd have to look for that. But we're just trying to compare the two strings. We can also check values in a different cell. Now I'm just gonna change this bottom one here. Instead of putting true here, I'm gonna go, Yes, okay. So we're gonna compare the, we're gonna check, does the cell E19, so there's E19, does that cell contain the word yes? So let's come down here and we'll use the cell reference again, equals if, and we're gonna bring our argument window, bring this down so we can see it. And we, so I'll bring it over here, I guess. Uh, so the test E19, does that equal to yes? Now notice I've typed in the yes, but I haven't gotten any response here. So Excel is not recognizing that as text. I need to put the double quotes around it manually. Once I've done that, now you see that, yeah, that's gonna be true. So we'll just go yes and no again, 
Okay, so you can compare text, you can compare numbers, you can compare values in cells. Okay, and that's usually the preferred way to do it because it makes it more uh, efficient and more functional for when you want to change values, excuse me, in those cells. Let's try and take a look at maybe an application. Maybe you have uh, been doing some training and you have these grades for the students that you've had the training for. And then this particular training, the passing grade is 70 or above. So we're gonna put an if statement here, equals if, bring our argument window. And I wanted my argument window, so I'm not sure why it's doing that. So I'm gonna do it again, equals if, double click my function, that's what I forgot to do. Use my insert function, and I'm gonna use the cell reference. This value, E36, if it's greater than or equal to 70, then we're gonna say that the person has passed. If not, they failed. Now, please pay attention to the different types of cell references here. So E36 is currently a relative cell reference. And if you don't remember what relative cell references are, remember it just means that the reference to the cell is going to change depending on where your active cell is located. So right now, my active cell is located in F36, and I'm taking the value in E36. So one column over, same row. If I move that formula somewhere else, it's going to say, okay, take the cell one column over in the same row. Okay. If you uh, don't remember the different types of cell references, go back to the part A lesson video and take a look at that. So here we can see that we've passed. This person has passed because they got over 70. We can now just copy down the formula, either drag it down or double click. And again, if I go to the different cells, you can see how, well, there's my relative cell reference. I'm in row 38, F38, and it's saying use the value in E38. Let's take a look at doing the same thing. So I'm just gonna put another little set of boxes here. And instead of just comparing this value to a given value 70. I'm gonna again compare that value, but I'm gonna compare it to the actual value that's in G33 as my passing grade. So I'll go equals if, give my function, argument window, and I wanna compare this if that is greater than or equal to my G33. If that's true, then the person has passed. If not, they failed. Now, something you have to keep in mind, again, E36 was the relative cell reference, as is G33, but I really want to compare all of these different cells to G33. So I have the option of using an absolute cell reference, or I could use a relative cell reference. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put my cursor between the G and the 33. I'm going to go FNF4 to get the absolute cell reference, and we'll go Okay, I'm also going to put some formatting here, Let's just make that put in the center. And now I'm going to copy my function down. And again, I get all the same answers. If I check one of the other cells, well, there's my relative cell reference with the E39. There's the absolute reference, always reference to the G33. Let's try and do that again, but in a slightly different way. Let's see if a relative cell reference will work. So equals if, we'll bring up our dialog box again. This is greater than or equal to my G33. And let's change the G33, FNF4. I don't want that one. I'm going to use this mixed reference. Keep the, the column can change, but the row has to stay the same. And again, we're just going to go the pass and the fail. Okay, and it seems to work. So let's copy it down and see. And yep, that one worked fine. So this one was using the, let's put this dollar sign uh, G, dollar sign 33. Okay, I guess I should put that as capital. Okay, and then this one used, which one did we use? We used the G dollar 33. So I'm just gonna to come to this one and copy it. 
just so you can see the difference. And let's try it again. So let's maybe do two more columns here. Let's get some formatting so it's easier to follow. Let's, see, let's use the other one. Let's use instead of G$33, let's change this to dollar sign G and 33 and see if that one works, okay? So the absolute worked, this mixed cell reference worked. Let's see if this one does. Equals if, bring our function, go to the argument window, compare this value. Is that greater than or equal to this value? Use our FNF4 until we get the type of cell reference we want. So dollar sign G 33. And again, let's go pass and fail. And we see, oh, that worked. Let's see if it works for all cases. And it doesn't. Okay, so this is where, remember, in the last lesson, I talked about the different um, mixed cell references that you have to be really careful with them because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So here we can see how it worked for the first three, but it didn't work down here. So let's just check the cell references. So it compared those two. Okay, that's fine. It compared this one. Mm, there's nothing in there. So it's saying that that's greater than or equal to zero. So it kept it as a pass. What's happening here? See how it keeps pushing the row down? So the first one went four columns over, then two columns over, four rows up. Same thing, four columns over, two columns over, four rows up. So see how this pink one the pink one is changing all the time. And that's what's giving us the problems. So just notice this mixed reference. Does not work. Okay, and that's something that you're going to have to pay attention to and be aware of as you work with your different cell references. These ones worked fine. All right, let's move on to our if in the past do notice sheet here. So we can see here, we're just taking a look at, we have some customer information and I wanna figure out their payment status. So I need to compare that, well, are they overdue or are they okay? I need to determine if there's some action I require and what that action might be. And then also, if it is overdue, then I want to charge that person a bit of extra money because they're late in making their payment. So I want to make sure that I'm charging them the correct amount. Okay. So we're going to use the if function to compare the number of days between today's date, and we'll just leave it at January 19th, 2021, and the actual invoice date here. This should be really the, the uh, invoice date. Okay. And indicate whether the payment status is past due or okay. So let's try this one here. Let's see what we're going to have to do for this one. So it's a little similar to what you would have done in first semester math, comparing the days between. So let's do that first. Equals days. We've seen this function before. And we're going to use our argument window. And we're just going to calculate the number of days between uh, today's date and the start date, the invoice date. Okay. And we'll go, okay. So there's 18 days between today's date, the 21st, sorry, between the 21st and the, oh, sorry, between January 1st and January 19th, okay? And if we make the comparison, we can see that, well, 18 days is longer than or more than 15 days. They should have paid within 15 days. So this one really should be past due, okay? In order to do that, we're going to put an if function around this. So we'll put in, we'll start typing if, we'll pick our function, we'll bring our dialog box, our argument box. We can see we're in the days function here. So I have to make sure I go over and put my cursor in the if. So now I'm in the if function. So if the number of days is, and we're going to want greater than the 15, and I'm gonna make that an absolute cell reference, always compare it to that cell. Then here we're going to type in that that 
customer has a past due and the other one is just going to be okay. So we can see that here this person was past due. Okay. If I copy this down, well January 5th to January 19th, we should anticipate that that one shouldn't be past due. So when I copy down, we get okay here. Now I've got some type of error here with my value. So let's double check that. So if days C, let's compare this. So ah, now we have a problem with our, looks like our days. So this is where sometimes, you know, I tried to do both of them at once. So let's actually check the days between. Let's make sure, oh, and see, this is where something weird's happening here. So it's always, especially when you have nested functions, double check your work beforehand. So let's compare this again. Let's go back and we're comparing this value C10 to D14. And hopefully you're seeing that in the, um, the D4, sorry. So this is where we have to recognize that the reference to the today's date should stay as an absolute cell reference, okay? And I didn't do that at first and I didn't double check that it worked for all cases. So this is where I need to go back and fix that. And again, an easy way to look at that to see which cells are actually being referenced. You can see here, well, there's the pink one. There's the D14. That one we do want to change because we want these ones to be picked up, these different dates down here. But the C10, that one has to be a absolute cell reference. So FNF4, that should now work. Let's double check it. Yep, now we've got all the days. And don't worry about these negative ones. That's just because the today's date is the 19th and these days are after. So there's no overdue there. So we verified it works. Let's get rid of that now. Let's come back and let's put our if function back in. So if... And we have now this, if that is greater than or equal to, and actually let's just use greater than. We could do either of the two. We'd need more details here. If that's greater than the date 15 days, and again, that one, as we said before, needs to have absolute cell references. Oops, and I'm in the wrong function here. I'm not paying attention. Okay, so that's my days function. I have to come over here in my if. It's so easy to make that, that, that mistake, guys. You know, watch for what function you're actually in right in your function argument box. So if the number of days between those two dates is greater than the 15 here, and I'll want that as an absolute reference, then we're gonna say that that customer is past due. Otherwise, they're okay. And again, we got past due. And then when we check the other ones, well, these ones all come okay. Because the number of days between January 5th and January 19th is 14. That's under the 15, it's okay. And as, all the, as are all the others. Let's take a look here in the action required. We're gonna say that, well, if this is past due, then I'm gonna need to contact my customer, okay? So let's use the if statement. So equals if. We'll bring up our argument window again, and we're gonna check that the value in this cell, is it equal to, and I'm gonna be looking for the text, so I need the double quotes, past due. If that's true, then I'm gonna to wanna to tell myself to contact customer. If it's not true, then no action required. And definitely, you know, we should be contacting our customers who are late in payments. And if I copy that down, no action required because these guys are not past due. So again, pay attention to different cell references. This one had relative cell references only. This one here had a combination of relative and absolute. Okay, this is where you really just have to keep trying and seeing which ones work the way you think it should work. Going to use another if statement now to say what is the actual amount that this person is going to owe by adding a five percent penalty charge. So let's take a look at this. We're going to say okay equals if 
um, equals if, sorry, I need my function. And I did it again. So let me try it, equals E equals if, double click, argument window. Okay, so if this cell is equal to, and we're gonna do the past due again, so we need the double quotes. Then what are we gonna do? Well, if it is past due, I want the invoice amount and I wanna add a penalty to that. And the penalty is gonna be 0.05 times the invoice amount, okay? Now you could have done 1.05 times the invoice amount, but I'm just showing it to you this way, invoice amount plus the penalty. If it's not past due, we're just gonna to refer to the invoice amount. And you can see here that, yep, that cell E14 does say past due, so that's true. And the answer, if it's true, is 3386775. And if it's not, it's just the original amount, 322.55. But because it came out as true, we now have that this person is going to owe a little bit more money. Okay, so it can go okay. We can maybe change that to accounting format and we can copy down. Okay, so you should be able to see if function as a nesting, if function comparing with text, and then if, if function using um, doing a calculation for a new amount due. Okay, let's move on to our next if sheet. And this is gonna be an invoice amount, again, to be paid. We're gonna do things a little bit differently this time. Instead of using the days function initially, what we're just gonna do is use subtraction. So just to show you that there are different ways to do the same thing. So in this cell here, E13, we're going to calculate the days between the dates, between the invoice date and again, today's date. So we're just gonna go equals today's date and we're gonna to wanna to keep that absolute cell reference and we're going to subtract the invoice date. And so we have an absolute cell reference and a relative cell reference and we'll just go equals. And we can see here that we're going to copy that down now and we get all the same dates similar to what we've seen before. So for this one, oops, I can see that it's the January 5th minus January 19th. Okay, all right. Let's do the same thing, but for this time round, we're going to use the days function to cal calculate the days between dates. And then we're also going to do a calculation. So we're going to do that like, you know, two steps in one example that we did before. So the first thing we'll do is go do the days function. So days, pick up our function here, and we're going to want the end date, which is our C8. We're going to want that as absolute. We never want that to change. The start date is going to be our invoice date. And we'll go, okay. And don't worry about the formatting. We're just checking the actual number and we get the exact same numbers. Okay, I'm gonna undo the copy. We're now going to continue on and do the rest of it to say what amount should be paid. So for this particular example, we're gonna say that, well, if you're paying earlier than the payment terms say, so the payment terms say, if you pay earlier than 25 days, you'll get a 5% discount. So we can see here that, well, for this customer, Bristol Corporation, it's 30 days, so they're not paying early. They shouldn't have to get any discount at all. Blue Company is paying early. They should get a discount, okay? Again, this is a concept from your first semester math course. So let's come again into our formula bar and let's start typing the if, let's pick our function Let's put our cursor in the if and open up our argument window again. And we're gonna test, is this less than, and we're gonna pick our days that we're compa comparing it to, our payment term days. And again, we'll make that absolute cell reference. If that's true, then the person should get a discount. So the discount they should get is that we're going to take the amount, the invoice amount, 
And the amount they're going to have to pay is 1 minus the C10 here. And they have to make that absolute. And we'll maybe put that in closed brackets so we have the right amount. So if I'm getting a 5% discount, it means I'm paying 95% of the entire bill. So that's why we have the 1 minus it. And then, okay, now we have an incorrect reference here. And you have to remember, um, and I do this routinely for myself, I forget that in math, you know, putting brackets around things makes means it's multiplying. Excel, you got to put that asterisk in it, okay? You have to put, you have to specifically tell it you're multiplying. So the invoice amount times the one minus the discount. And if it's not discounted, then they just have to pay the full amount. Okay, so we'll go okay. And we can see here that because this is more than 25 days, the 30, there's no discount here. Let's see if it works for the rest of them. Yep. So for the other ones, this was 14 days, less than the 25, they get the discount. And I've just done some calculations on the side here that we can check with. If they got a discount, this would be the discount amount and this would be the discounted invoice. For the first one, that didn't apply. That's why it's the same amount, okay? So we can see how, you know, yes, you could have done this individually, and I've got the little calculations here, but using the days, using the logical logic of the if function, you can do all the calculations in one. And remember, the point of Excel is to make our lives a little faster, make our work a little more efficient. Let's take a look at our last if example. This is a relatively complicated one because we're looking at a nested if function. And then we're gonna see how our new function, the lookup, is actually gonna make our lives a lot easier than having to do a nested if. So we have a situation, again, where we've had some training and somebody wants to convert the um, training scores into letter grades. So we'll do it using a nested if. We'll do it using a nested if, but using cell references from here. And then we'll do it using a VLOOKUP function using what we call a lookup table. So in this particular case, if a student gets over 89, they're going to have an A. If they get between 80 and 89, they'll get a B. If they get between 70 and 79, they'll get a C. 59, sorry, 60 to 69, they'll get a D, and anything below will be an F, okay? So it's not our institution, it's just some arbitrary one that I picked. So let's take a look at the logic for the nested if. With complicated if statements, it's always best to try to outline them on a piece of paper, okay? Try and sort out your logic beforehand. So here's the multiple ifs that I told you. There's four of them in total. So my first test is the person's mark greater than 89. If that's true, they get an A. If it's false, I have to do another test. I test, is the mark greater than 79? If it's true, they get a B. If not, I have to do another test. If the mark is greater than 69, then I have to give the person a C. If not, I do another test. And the final test is, is that if the person gets over 59, then they get a D. And if not, they finally get an F. Okay? So notice how we've done it sort of from the top down, from the highest mark down to the lowest. Now, this is um, beyond what we expect you to do and we expect you to be able to show in your assignments and your simulations. But it is important to recognize that, you know, we've nested one or two functions before, now we're nesting four together. So when I come up here, you can see that, well, there's my cell reference, C10, and I've got my numbers here, 89, 79, 69, and 59. And if I come into this first if and check my argument box, you can see how, well, there's my first test. If I go into my next if, there's my second test. If I go into my third one, there's the third, and then there's the fourth, okay? And as I said, this is, you know, sort of beyond uh, the scope of most of the stuff we do. So I'm just showing you how to do that today, giving it to you. 
and I can copy it down and confirm that it works. So here's a person who got 70, so that's greater than this one here, so they should have gotten a C. Here's a person who has 62, so 62 is greater than 59, so they should have gotten a D. Okay, so it does work. Let's do the same thing using nested ifs, but as opposed to putting the numbers in like we see in the formula bar, let's refer to the cells. So again, if I come up here and I put my cursor in the formula bar, you can see that I'm comparing that score for Larry and I'm comparing it to cells I2, I3, I4, and I5 respectively. Okay. Again, we still have the for if functions. We can go through the argument window again, but it get a little cumbersome to do. So let's just copy that down and we can see we get the exact same results. This is where a function called VLOOKUP can actually make things much simpler for us, as opposed to having to have all this logic here written out, we can now reduce it to what we see in the formula bar. My VLOOKUP, look something up, where am I looking it up, what information am I gonna pull out, and what kind of match do I wanna do? So let's try and reproduce this one. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to go equals VLOOKUP. And we can see that the VLOOKUP function, if we bring our argument window up, let's maybe, let's put it here, okay? So it looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns a value in the same row from a column that you specify or identify. And remember, by default, the table must be sorted in an ascending order, so from smallest to largest. So here I'm going, okay, I want to look something up. What do I want to look up? I want to look up this person's mark. Where am I going to look it up? I'm going to look it up in this lookup table. But I'm always going to look it up in the same place. So I need that whole table to be an absolute cell reference. So dollar sign K, dollar sign two, to dollar sign L, dollar sign S. Now it's gonna look it up as it says in the leftmost column. So it's gonna try and find the 98, sorry, the 70 in this row here. And it's gonna say, okay, well, what information now do you wanna pull out from this table? And we're gonna pick column two. In a lookup table, the leftmost column is where you look things up. That's going to be called column one. And then any other columns after that are column two, three, four, etc. And for the range lookup, this is where we either want to find the closest match by putting in true or just leaving it blank or find an exact match. Now we don't have exact values in here. We don't have like say zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to a hundred. We have ranges. So we're going to want to put in here that we're going to go true. Okay, and notice I typed it lowercase, but Excel converted it to uppercase. And the mark is a 70, so it says that the person is gonna get a C. So a 70 is between these two, so yes, they're gonna get a C. So we can go, okay. And that's a much easier function to create than all this big long nested F. Please note though, as they said before, the lookup table in the argument window said it had to be ordered from lowest to highest. Here, we just had the cells A to F was the, if you like, highest to lowest, so it was reverse. This is a common feature that people forget in the lookup table. Let's try typing it out one more time, equals V lookup. Bring our argument window. What are we looking up? The 54. Where are we looking it up? We're looking it up in this table. We can't forget to make that an absolute cell reference for both the start and the end point. We're gonna pull the information in column two and we're gonna put true here and we'll go okay. And then once we have that, we can then just copy down, okay? So that's our first look at the VLOOKUP function. It's just a little bit more efficient than the if. <clears throat> Let's go on and take a look at more VLOOKUP examples. 
So let's move to the VLOOKUP bonus sheet. This is a little similar to your uh, chapter two mid-level assignment. And just as a um, bit of a hint for that assignment, please make sure you're using appropriate cell references. You'll notice in this particular workbook, I have in red almost on every sheet, ensure you are using correct cell references where applicable. That's really important for assign the mid-level assignment in chapter two. So we're gonna use the VLOOKUP function as it states here to figure out what the employee's bonus percentage is, what the bonus amount is, and what their total monthly salary is. And as opposed to just pulling the bonus percent out and then doing multiplications, we're actually going to use the VLOOKUP to do this. Okay, so we're not just going to multiply it. We're trying to use the efficiency of Excel. So looking at the, the bonus column here in J11, we can see that we looked, uh, we were using a VLOOKUP function. I'm looking up the salary, $15,000, in the lookup table down here. So we can see here from lowest to highest, there's our column one. Here's our bonus percentages, five down to one in column two. And 3,000 and below, we'll get 5%. Between three and six, we'll get four. Six and nine, we'll get three. 12 and nine, we'll get two. 15 and 12 will be one. And that's our range, okay? Let's again try and reproduce this equals V lookup. And you should really be trying this along with the video so that you can get the benefit of doing it yourself. What am I looking up? The salary. Where am I looking it up? In the lookup table. Notice in the lookup table, we are not highlighting the headers, okay? Just the actual information. Make sure that's an absolute cell reference for both the start and the end. What information do we want to pick out? Column two. Are we looking for an exact match? No. So we're going to put that as true, but we need to spell it right. <laughs> and we'll go, okay. So that's the 2%. And we can just copy that down, okay? And these are all five here because they fall between the three and six range. If I change one of these values, let's maybe change this person's to 6,500. You can see how the percentage automatically changes. Okay, so again, the benefit of being able to use these different functions. Let's figure out the bonus amount. But again, we're going to use the bonus amount with VLOOKUP. So as opposed to just saying, well, the 1% times the 15, the 2 times the 12, etc., we're actually going to use VLOOKUP to do it more efficiently for us. So you can see how we said, okay, look this value up in this table, pull out the percentage, and then whatever that result is, multiply it by the base salary. Okay, so let's try that out. Equals VLOOKUP, so it gets us to practice our function a bit more. We want to look up the 12. We want to look it up in this table with the absolute cell reference. We want to output the bonus, which is in column two. We're not looking for an exact match and we'll go, okay. Don't worry about the formatting right now. So here's the 2%, there's, that's why it's showing is 02. And now we can come here and we can say, well, I want that answer to be multiplied by the 12,000. So notice how the salary, the base salary is showing up in two places. And now we have the bonus amount calculated in one step versus say, calculate the bonus, then multiply the bonus by the base month salary, get the amount. Okay, let's do that one more time. Equals V lookup. Pick the argument box, salary. Where am I looking it up? Make that an absolute cell reference. Pull out column two information and put it true. Students have told me, and I find the same thing, that when we're doing these types of functions that have a lot of different arguments in them, it's sort of good to either talk out loud or to yourself in your head to explain to yourself what you're doing. As you do that, you're getting more comfortable with using the function. Okay, okay now I don't, I have to remember that I need to multiply that result. So asterisk times the base salary and that will give me my bonus amount. Okay. And then once you're comfortable, you can just copy it down. Okay. 
last part of this particular sheet, let's do the same thing, but calculating the total monthly salary. And the total monthly salary should be the base salary plus the bonus amount. So you can see for the first one, it's just 15,000 plus the 150 or 15,150. But when I check that cell, I've actually done everything in one cell versus having to do it in three. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's go equals VLOOKUP. Use our argument, look up our salary, look it up in this table, use the correct cell reference, pull out the information column two, the bonus amount. Don't look for an exact match, okay? Let's come back up here and say, okay, I wanna multiply that now by the salary. So now I have the same bonus amount, but then I wanna take this. So I'm gonna put it all in brackets and I wanna add it to the monthly salary. And now we get the monthly salary. So the 12,000 plus the 240 should be 12,240. Be efficient, do it in one cell versus multiple cells. Let's do that again. You'll notice that when we have functions within functions, we build them. So I start with the VLOOKUP. I then argument window, look for that salary, look it in this lookup table with absolute reference, pull out the bonus in column two, not exact match, okay. I'm going to, now you might worry that you're seeing zero here. If we actually increased this, you'd see the 05, which is really the 5%. Multiply that by the base salary to get the bonus amount. We did that right, and then take this bonus amount and add it to the base salary. And we get the 5,500 plus 275 would be 5,775. And then once we're comfortable, we can come copy the function down, okay? So VLOOKUP will search a table for a value that you specify. So we were looking up this base salary. It's going to search every row in your lookup table until it finds a match and you determine whether it's an exact or an, a not exact match. It only searches for that value you're looking up in the first column. Okay, so be careful. Always make sure your lookup table has the first column as the thing that's going to be looked up, the thing that is going to be looked up. When a match is found, it's going to then output a value from whatever column you refer to. You could actually refer to column one again, or column two, or whichever column you're interested in. Using an approximate match, so in other words, that true option will start at zero and go up to the first potential match. So notice it didn't have to start at zero in my lookup table. I started at 3,000, but zero to 3,000 is 5%. So here's the example, zero to 3,000 will give you a 5% bonus, above 3,000 to 6,000 will be four, as I mentioned before, okay? Let's move on to another example, VLOOKUP customer list. Okay, in this sheet, what we're gonna look at is that we have a customer master data and we're gonna have two tasks. And the first one is just gonna say, use the VLOOKUP function to find, to look up a customer name and output either the company or the country that they are from. So let's push this up a little bit. So we can see here, if I go to my formula box, I'm looking up the name Roger Munn. I'm looking it up in this table. Notice my leftmost column is the customer name. And for the first one, I want the company. So it's gonna come pull out column three. If I take a look at the country one, same thing. It's looking up customer name in this lookup table. It's pulling out information from column four and false. Why do we have false in this case? Because I want to match the exact customer name. So let's take a look at just typing this in. So equals V lookup. So this is just the basic lookup again. What am I looking up? I'm looking up this name. Where am I looking it up? I'm looking it up in my lookup table. Notice again, we're not highlighting the headers. 
So FNF4 to get the absolute cell reference. Now I want the company and that's column one, two, three is the company. So I need to put three in there. And I do want an exact match because I'm looking for people's names. So I want to go false because here, find an exact match, put false in there. Okay, and it says that, well, there is a Peter Ramsey there. It's going to be an exact match. We're going to pull out the company, and the answer we get is the Rambler. And we'll have to take a look to see if that came out right. So let's go down. There's Peter Ramsey, and there's his company, the Rambler. Let's copy that down, and we can check George Hamilton, set voltage, and Wolfgang is at our arcade. So it works fine. Let's try the country one, typing it in, equals VLOOKUP. Again, we're looking up the name, table array. That's our lookup table. Make it an absolute reference. This time around, we want to pull out the country. So that's column four, column one, column two, column three, column four. And again, we want false, we want an exact match. And we can go OK. And Peter Ramsey, here he is down here. And yep, that's Germany. And we'll copy that down. Okay, so just basic lookup. If I change this, maybe I go on R-O-G-E-R-M-U-N-E. Okay, notice how we're getting not applicable. Okay, because it couldn't find a Roger Munn. Okay, so this is an error where something wasn't found. So this is why we want the exact match. You know, maybe there's people that have very similar spellings that we have to be aware of. So I'm just gonna fix that back. Roger Munn, and now we can look it up, okay? And this is where if you were just looking say for one particular customer, you wouldn't need all four rows here. Now to get around that error, that if we see something like an NA, we can actually use another function and this is beyond the scope of our course, but it is actually very useful. So it's a handy one to know how to use because maybe we have these customer or maybe employee databases and we're looking up or maybe a product database, all sorts of different things we could use this for. If that employee number or that employee ID or product ID, whatever it might be, if it doesn't exist, maybe we wanna tell ourselves that, oh, new customer or new product, add it to the database. Okay, so that we don't have errors in the future. Stuff happens, right? So here we're going to use an if error function. And if error, it just means that, well, we couldn't find what you were looking for. And this is the message we've decided to give you. So here, let's take a look at what we put here. So there's our function. We said, look up this customer code, look it up in this table, now notice how the pink table does not include the customer name. Okay, remember the lookup table, the leftmost column has to be the thing you're looking for. So I'm not looking for a name anymore. I'm just looking for the customer code. Once I find it, I need the information in that same column. So I don't wanna output the country or the um, company name. I just want the code to come out as a confirmation that, yeah, that's what I got. And then I'm going to say I want an exact match, so keep the false. And then the if error, this is where, if I click on my argument window for if error, so this is my value, my VLOOKUP function. Notice I don't have to put any condition on it. I just put the function. And then if there's an error, if they can't find that code, we're going to give ourselves the information, add that to the master list, okay? And I can go, okay. So I'm gonna type this one manually so we get some practice with that. So I'm gonna start with the VLOOKUP. Pick my function, my argument window, look up this ID, look it up in this lookup table, make it the proper cell reference. Now I only wanna pull back the customer ID again, if it exists, and I'm gonna put false because I wanna look for an exact match, okay? And I'm just gonna leave the VLOOKUP for now. And if I copy that down, we'll notice here this customer ID 
4985 doesn't exist. So we're getting that NA, okay? But maybe somebody else is using this sheet and they have no idea what that means. So we need to give them some better information. So I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna continue by putting that if error around it. So equals if error, start typing it, pick my function, put my cursor in the if error word, bring up my argument window, confirm that I have if error, and then the information I wanna put is just, if it's not there, add to master list. And then we go, so we see here, retain, returns the value if error expression if it's an error. The value of error is any value or if it, any, is any value or expression or reference, okay? And if I come up here, there's the message that's gonna show up if there's an error associated with this step here. So I go, okay. And now when I copy it down, now I can see, oh, this person's or this customer code's not on my list. I have to make sure that I, we add it, okay? So it's a way of double checking, especially when you're in different companies that have um, these large product or customer or maybe even employee lists. You have a new ID you're creating. Uh, you've taken over the job from somebody else. You have the list of these ideas. You're not sure if they're in there or not. This is a quick little thing that you can do to confirm. If it's there, no issues. If it's not, well, now it's been flagged, <laughs> okay? All right, let's take a look at another example. This is gonna be a, an invoice example that we can try. And, you know, these are just some different little things. You notice that we're always just practicing the if and the VLOOKUP. So here I have an invoice that I wanna create and I'm creating it based on my product catalog. And my product catalog has the product ID, the description, the quantity the company has on hand, the price per unit or unit, sorry, unit cost, unit price, and then whether it needs to be reordered or not, okay? So we have customers, we want to try and make invoicing a little bit of an easier process for our employees. So we say, okay, well, the employee, we expect them to plug in the quantity. We expect them to plug in the item number, but we would like the description, whether it's back order or not, the unit price that we're charging, and then the line total for that item to be automatic cal automatically calculated. So you can see here that for the cell D19, I've used a VLOOKUP. Look up the item number, look it up in this table, and then output the description, which is in column two. For the back order, same type of thing, look up the item in this table and output the value in column six. So remember, this is column one, two, three, four, five, six. And then in the line total, we're gonna to use the if function. And the if function is saying, okay, we're gonna check whether it's on back order or not. If it's not on back order, so if, it's, if it is on back order, I should say, the logic I've used is that, well, we're not gonna put any amount in there for the line total because we're gonna want the, we don't, we're not going to want to charge our customer anything for that because they're not receiving it, okay? It'll, they'll be charged when they receive it. If it's not on back order, then they're gonna be charged the number quantity times the unit price. So you can see here, five times the 1994 is just under $100. So let's see if we can do that ourselves. So let's say we want to order four items and let's pick item 106, okay? So I'm going to come here and go equals VLOOKUP. V, oops, I came out of my cell. Equals the lookup. And we're going to come to our argument box. We're going to look up the line item. We're going to look it up in this table. And again, please notice we're not highlighting the headers. Now, what came up here? A named array or a named range. So let's just go back and refresh. And let's say, okay, remember this from a previous lesson. 
we have, we can name different ranges. This was in the math and statistical functions sheet from part A of chapter two. So in my name manager, I can see that, oh, I've actually named that product catalog, product list, okay? And since I highlighted it again, it said, oh, she wants the same information. So I'm just gonna delete that for now. Go okay. And we can see here that once I've deleted it, it messed up what's happening here, right? Because now I don't have the correct reference. I'll fix that in a few minutes. So let's come back here. Where is my, there we go. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna go equals V lookup, just so that it works the same way as we did before. We're going to look up the ID. We're going to look it up in this range, this table lookup. We're going to absolute cell reference. Now we wanna pull the description, which is in column two, and we do want an exact match for the product ID, and we'll go okay. Okay, and yep, 106 is sunscreen. We now wanna check, is it on back order? So again, another VLOOKUP. Pick the function, argument window, look up the ID, where to look it up. In our lookup table, of the absolute cell reference. And this time we're trying to look up the back order and that's in one, two, three, four, five, that's in column six. And again, we want an exact match and okay. We'll try and pull the unit price now equals V lookup. Argument window, look up the ID, table array, absolute cell reference, and the unit price is gonna be column five. And again, exact match. And then for the line total, this is where we're gonna use the if statement equals if, bring our function, argument window, if this is equal to, and remember it's text, so I have to put the double quotes around it. So if that is yes, then I just want a zero in that field. If it's no, I want to do the calculation and the calculation will be the quantity times the unit price. And I can go, okay. And it's not on back order, so we get the pricing done. And I can actually format these to say accounting so we know it's money. Okay. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to highlight my cells. I'm going to go into formulas, define name, and we're going to call it product. And I'm going to call it product list. Okay. And notice how it has absolute cell references around it. And we'll go, okay. Let's do another one here. Let's say we want two items and we want item 113. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the V lookups, but I'm gonna use the named range equals V lookup. I wanna look up the ID, comma. Now remember I named my range, so I can start typing product and see as soon as I go PR, I get functions, but there's my named range. So I can just pick it and now it's highlighted that. Okay, what do I wanna pick out? I wanna pick out column two and I want false for exact, and I can go with enter. And 113 is the magazine. Let's do the same thing for the back order, V lookup. This one, I'll use the actual argument window to help us out a little bit. So look up item 13, table array. Let's start going PR like we did before. Mm, it's not working that way, is it? So let's backspace here and let's come up to here and see how we have on our formulas tab. I have use in formula. I can pick that and now choose my product list. I'll do another one like this just so that you see how it works. Now this time we want the back order. That was column six and false. Okay, And I've got my back order. Let's do the unit price equals V lookup. Function, look up the ID. 
remember the table array, I can't just type it in here. I'm gonna to have to pick the use in formula under the formulas tab. So use in formula, pick the product list, column index, the unit price was column five and false. And then here we'll do the calculation equals if, and we wanna test is this equal to yes. If it's on back order, then no amount calculated. If it's not on back order, then we're gonna calculate the quantity times the unit price. And okay, and again, I'll change that formatting. So they're both accounting. And now what I could do is I could take this function and copy the function down into the next, we'll say the next, I'm just gonna do it to the next four. Control V. And I can do the same thing here. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control, sorry, Control V, and then Control C, and then Control V. And there's nothing in there right now because this is where I have to pick this. So maybe I want three items of product number 101. And as soon as I press enter, then that line is automatically calculated. So this would make things maybe a little quicker. Something else you can do, and I've done it here in the first cell here. Sometimes people ask me, how'd you get that little sort of drop down list? Another feature that we can do, and again, this is beyond the scope of the course, but it's a handy item to know, is to say, okay, well, I want a list of items. So maybe here I wanna go, I want seven of, and what are my available items? Well, what I can do is come to, again, uh, I always forget what tab it's on. So I'm gonna to go to my home tab and I'm gonna to go to insert. I never remember where this is. Uh, data, that's where it is. You'd think I'd know that by now. I always forget. So I'm in my cell, my C24. I go to the data tab and, oops, did I cursor off of that? So I'm gonna come here. And I'm in my data tab and I'm gonna come over here to the data tools and data validation. And I'm gonna pick data validation and I'm gonna say values from a list. And my source is going to be this list here. And again, notice how it has put in absolute cell references and I can go, okay. And now I have a drop down, and now I can pick whatever product it happens to be. Okay. And I could copy that down also, control C, control V. So now I can come here and say, maybe I want four and I can come here and do the drop down, pick a different item and then things are automatically calculated. And then down here again, we can do a subtotal, just our sum function. I've already put that in for you. We can put our tax rate, whatever it happens to be. And then we can have our overall total well, there's something missing here. This is just the tax amount, right? Because it's the total times the tax rate. So I still have to add that to my subtotal. And now that's the overall total that's due, okay? Um, most I think would have the, uh, instead of having the percentage here, they'd have say the percentage on the side and then the amount of tax versus the percent tax, okay? So I've just done it slightly differently. So again, another example, with uh, VLOOKUPs with IF, and then I added just that new little thing with data validations, and I also referred to the named ranges again. There's one last sheet in this workbook, and I'm not gonna go through this one. This is where I want you to maybe just try it on your own. You don't have to hand it in. It's not for marks or anything, but if you're looking for some different practice, look at this information and say that, okay, you're a teacher, you have a student table of grades, you wanna calculate the average for each of the subjects for each of the different subjects around. You wanna add, calculate the average for each of the individual students. And then you wanna convert those averages to letter grades. You're missing some information though. And you have this table that you have manually typed in these missing grades, but you want to automatically have these grades go into where they're supposed to be and then you want these calculations to be automatically done. 
So in order to do this, you're going to maybe need if functions, vlookup, maybe even something called hlookup. We'll talk about that in one second, and possibly an if error. See? So just try it out. It's a bit of a challenge exercise, but it's a really nice comprehensive one. The difference between vlookup and hlookup, well, this is a vertical lookup table, hence the V. This is a horizontal lookup table. So remember, in vertical lookups, we look up the information in the first column and we pull something in one of the columns. In horizontal lookup, i.e. the H lookup, we're looking something up in the first row of the lookup table, and then we're pulling something in some of the sub something from the subsequent rows. Okay, so give that a try. See if you can uh, figure it out on your own. As I said, this is a, a bit of a challenge exercise for those of you who uh, want to do a little more than what's actually covered in the course. Okay, thanks.